spiritual health, which affects your energy fields, which gives energy to your endocrine gland systems to function, which tell the rest of your health of your body how it's going to be. So you have from the inside out that whole process. So when we're ministering healing, we're really making these systems of our body alive through healing with the Spirit of Christ. Greetings to each one who joins this teaching. Um, blessings to each one. I'm excited to get into this topic today. Um, we've been talking, of course, about this series called The Keys to the Kingdom, where Jesus said, I give you the keys to the kingdom. Um, and before that, he had said, the kingdom of God is within you. So we've been talking over these last videos. This is the fourth um, in this series. We've been talking about keys of understanding, keys of revelation, keys of knowledge um, that open up the kingdom of God within us so that our whole person can experience the kingdom reality, our mind, our emotions, our body, um, and consequently the world around us. So we've been talking about opening up this kingdom access, kingdom experience, where our whole person is healed and well, mentally, emotionally, and physically, uh, and where we can bring that same wholeness um, to those around us, to the world around us. Um, by way of recap, quickly, and I can't recap in depth everything we've gone over, um, but if any of these things that I mention interest you, um, you can go back and watch the other videos leading up to this one. Um, we've been talking about the seven spirits of God. We've been talking about the seven spirits of God that are mentioned in scripture all the way throughout. Um, and th those spirits are the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of insight or right vision, the spirit of counsel, the spirit of the Lord, the I am presence, the spirit of might, the spirit of intimacy, in the spirit of the fear of the Lord. So we've been talking a bit about the seven spirits of God. We've been talking about how those are, um, that's what our spirit is composed of. It says in scripture that the seven spirits of God are sent throughout all the earth. We know we have all seven of these spirits within us, um, according to the spirit that we have in us, every person on the face of the earth. But it doesn't mean that every spirit is quickened in us. For example, we all have the spirit of wisdom God given within us, but it doesn't mean we're all operating in wisdom, it doesn't mean we're all wise, and so the Spirit of Christ is a quickening spirit to make alive, um, to make alive that which is dead or that which is not active. So we talked about how uh, operating in the Spirit of Christ is operating uh, for the purpose of bringing to life every dimension of our being, every dimension of our spirit, so we're quickened, so we're alive um, in all aspects of the seven spirits of God operating in our whole person and in oneness with Christ. Uh, we talked a bit about how just like we have seven dimensions to our spirit that's in us, we have seven regions in our body that are directly affected or that are a direct reflection of our spirit, how everything in our, everything in our physical body is just a reflection of what's in our spirit. So just like we have spiritual vision, we also have natural vision which would be your eyes, just like we have um, spiritual, a spiritual ear, we have the ear of our spirit, so too we have natural hearing. Um, and every single region of our body is a reflection of a dimension of our spirit, which means that, uh, which means that how we're doing spiritually directly affects how we're doing physically. And there's a connection there. Um, on the subject of connection between our spirit and our body, and making our physical body alive, um, which results in healing, because we've been talking a lot about healing from the inside out. Healing from the inside out, we've been talking about how um, our bodies are made up of electromagnetic energy, that's a more scientific standpoint, <clears throat> that we're electrically run beings. Um, and, and, and so how our energy fields are operating dictates our health, uh, we've talked about how, you know, with today's technology, you can even take pictures of your electromagnetic field, um, pictures that uh, capture more of the light spectrum than what we can see with our natural eye. Uh, so you can take a picture of any person and it'll show, um, it'll show the aura, if you will, or the electromagnetic field 
um, that's making their body alive and running all the functions of their body. We talked about how there is a, um, a connection. If there's something not operating properly in your um, physical body and your physical health, it's often connected to a depletion or a lack of energy in that part of your aura or that part of your electromagnetic field. And so when we heal the inner functionings of our body, when we become quickened and activated in the seven dimensions of our spirit and how they affect in, in our, the regions of our physical body, becoming vibrant and alive um, with the spirit that's in us, it will make our energy field completely balanced and operative as it should be, which will then cause our physical health to improve and be healed. And so we talked about how uh, this is so much better than, you know, in, in Christianity, so often um, there's an emphasis on laying hands on the sick and healing them, which is wonderful. It's powerful. It's important. But sometimes in the midst of laying hands on the sick and healing them, Sometimes this happens so often that I've seen, it's happened to me before, uh, where you lay hands on someone and heal them from maybe a back condition or heart condition or whatever the case might be, and they're healed, completely healed, med medically verifiably healed, um, because of the power of God through the laying on of hands. However, um, in a day or a week or two weeks later, that same exact condition comes back. And whenever that happens, it's a problem because what happened in that situation is that you topically addressed the sickness, but you didn't address the inner problem, either the spiritual problem or the problem in the energy field or something that is, was the root cause. And so because you only topically addressed um, the healing need, uh, whatever was wrong on the inner functioning of their person just generated the same problem again. And so, uh, Jesus said, if you make the inside well, then the outside will be, be well, excuse me. <laughs> if you make the inside well, then the outside will become well also. And so we're healing from the inside out. And this has made a major shift in my ministry where now, where now I see so many people heal permanently because the inner problem is addressed. Um, the spiritual problem is balanced and sorted out. The problem in the thinking, the problem in some spiritual dimension of who they are and, and the energy field is fixed and then the physical problem is easy to fix and it's permanent. Um, sometimes I even, when I'm healing, sometimes I'll actually um, fix the inner problem, fix the uh, spiritual problem, fix the energy field problem and balance everything, get everything working as it should. And even without addressing the topical need for healing, I'll tell them, that's going to be healed within a week, within two weeks, because the inner functioning has been adjusted and the report always comes back that the healing happened and it's permanent and complete. Because if you heal from the inside out, it's permanent, it's complete, and you don't have this issue where um, you pray for people and, and some of them get healed, or you pray for someone they get healed and then they uh, have the same condition again in a short amount of time. You eliminate those problems by understanding how to heal the whole person. That's why I'm excited about this. So we've been talking about the seven spirits of God, talking about the seven regions of the body that's affected by it, uh, which of course gets uh, into the topic of chakras, because some people say, you know, is, are we talking about chakras? Is that new age? Is that demonic? Um, is that this? Is that that? Does it belong in Christianity? And so we have that in one of the videos before, which you can go back and see. Um, I believe it's in lesson two that we talked a little more in depth about that. But um, in short, the word uh, chakra means wheel, wheel of energy in Sanskrit. It's how other schools of spirituality have been exploring um, and putting terminology to this concept uh, that is very native to Judeo-Christianity um, of the seven spirits of God and, um, and, the, and the inner functionings of our being. And so there is a connection, but it's certainly not an innovation of the New Age or a uh, demonic thing that they came up with. Um, it's something that is in richly saturated throughout uh, Judeo-Christianity and Christianity itself. Um, even, um, and I can't review too much, but going back to Ezekiel, where it talks about the wheels. Again, chakra means wheel in Sanskrit. Um, Ezekiel talks about these wheels 
and it says the spirit of the living being was in these wheels. Um, and so um, early Christianity, Judeo-Christianity, etc., uh, understood these concepts, and so do we today. Uh, so it certainly doesn't belong to just one school of spirituality, and it's certainly not out in left field, and there is a connection um, between what we're talking about from Scripture and this whole person healing and the seven spirits of God, etc. All right, so I'm excited today in this lesson because uh, we're going to actually dive into um, healing. We're going to dive into actual healing. Um, we've been laying a lot of foundation work, um, and now we're going to actually begin healing the whole person in this lesson. Um, and so uh, last, last week we um, talked about uh, the higher self versus the lower self. Now that's a concept that is so powerful. It has literally changed my life. It has helped me overcome addictions. It's helped me overcome um, strongholds and struggles and issues in my life, uh, immorality, things of that nature. And so the, 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 what we talked about in the last week, if you haven't watched it, you should, um, is so powerful. The higher self versus the lower self, talking about the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of insight or spiritual vision and how that uh, makes up the higher self. That's the part of our being that gets revelation from God, understanding from God, insight from God, um, and to see things spiritually, to see things as they are, to have a higher perspective um, that comes from the spiritual realm. It says in scripture to set your mind on things that are above, where we are seated in Christ, in heavenly places. So we keep our mind on things that are above. We have those higher perspectives, those deeper insights, and from that place of the higher self, we govern the rest of our life because the other four spirits of God are related to um, our relationships here on the earth. We're seated in heavenly places, but our feet are on the ground. We have relationships, we have responsibilities, we have jobs. In fact, we have to bring the kingdom to the earth. And so from the heavenly perspective, from the higher perspective, uh, from the deeper insights, from the revelation, from the understanding that we get in the higher self, through our connection to, to God, uh, we then use that to govern our relationships, to govern um, the steps we take here on the earth, our lifestyle, um, etc. And so we literally saturate all of this life here on the earth, which is a, a, a good, There's the lower self is not bad. Um, all of these things, intimacy, relationships, responsibilities, they're all good. Um, but we advance the kingdom on the earth in our lifestyle, in our body, in the world around us by governing the lower self with the higher self. So it's a powerful concept that we talked about last lesson. Um, and today we're actually going to be doing some healing, like I said, and we're going to be doing healing in the regions of our body that are connected to the higher self. So let me introduce this quickly. Just like there are seven spirits of God, and seven connected regions in our body, which are often in various spiritual um, communities or influences called chakras. Um, so there's seven spirits of God, there's seven regions of our body, or seven chakras, if you will, that are supposed to be active and alive in the presence of God. Um, and so I'm going to add some science to this quickly. Just like there are seven spirits of God, just like there are seven regions to your body, um, there are seven major endocrine glands in your body. Now, what is an endocrine gland? An endocrine gland is a gland in your body that secretes hormones directly into your bloodstream, which basically give orders to, the, to the, all of the functions of your body. In other words, the endocrine glands are the control center or the dictators of your, your ent the entirety of your physical health. And so... This is exciting to me because what people have understood for a long, long time spiritually before they had access to uh, the science that we have access to today, they called them things like chakras, wheels of energy in our being, things like that. Um, but it's actually scientific. It can be understood through a scientific lens. There are seven major endocrine glands. And if you are familiar with the chakra chart or a picture of where all the chakras are, um, the seventh is in your crown, the sixth is in your brow, the fifth is in your throat, the uh, fourth is in your heart region, the third is just under your ribs, um, etc., going down. And so if you look at the endocrine gland system, the seven major endocrine glands that dictate the entire health of your body 
are in those exact locations. In those exact locations. So you have the, the pituitary gland on your crown, the uh, pineal gland on your brow between the two hemispheres of your brain. You have the thyroid gland on the throat, etc. So this is another reason why chakras can't be seen as demonic or uh, foreign or have no place in Christianity because, um, because it's scientific more than anything. You could simply understand this in the scientific lens of the N seven endocrine gland systems if you'd prefer um, because it's the same thing. So um, we're going to be we're going uh, so or, or let, let me let me back up and so healing our whole person or healing the inner functionings of our system first it's quickening ourselves spiritually to the seven spirits of God wisdom insight counsel might all these things and then it is ministering ministering the spirit of Christ to the regions of our body to the endocrine gland systems to make them alive and vibrant. You have to remember the connection between the energy fields in our body, the physical systems of our body, the endocrine glands, and consequently the rest of our physical health of our entire body. So you see the progression from the inside out. It's your spiritual health, which affects your energy fields, which gives energy to your endocrine gland systems to function, which tell the rest of your health of your body how it's going to be. So you have from the inside out that whole process. So when we're ministering healing, we're really making these systems of our body alive through healing with the Spirit of Christ. Now, just like you could lay hands on uh, a bad back and heal the back, or a broken wrist and heal the broken wrist, uh, so too you can lay hands on your endocrine systems and heal them and restore them to functionality because it's the dysfunctionality or the slowdown um, of the endocrine glands that end up affecting all of the health of your body and creating all kinds of health conditions um, that need healing. Um, so it's ministering that healing spirit, that healing energy, that spirit of Christ, releasing that into um, these systems of our body to be fully alive, fully functional, and then our whole health can improve and be healed. So I said we're going to be healing the systems and functions re related to the higher self, the wisdom, um, and the insight. So let's dive right into that. Let's dive right into that. There are two, um, we're talking about the endocrine glands or the chakras, if you will, or the endocrine glands, if you're more scientific, or, um, but we're talking about the two different regions or functions um, that affect the higher self or that are connected to the higher self. We know the higher self is the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of insight or right spiritual vision. And so the two uh, endocrine glands that are connected to, uh, to these regions of your body are the pituitary gland and the pineal gland. The pituitary gland is what has been referred to as the seventh chakra. The pineal gland is what has been referred to as the sixth chakra um, or the crown chakra pituitary gland and brow chakra pineal gland, which are the actual locations of those endocrine glands. So the pituitary gland and the pineal gland. Okay, so let's talk about the functions and the roles of each of these glands quickly before we begin healing. Um, the pituitary gland, I love the way that um, scientists and doctors often refer to the pituitary gland. Um, they refer to it as the master gland. The master gland. Uh, they refer to it as such because um, it is the endocrine gland that gives the orders to all of the rest of your body what it needs to do. It is the beginning of all things relating to your body. It's the master gland because it gives orders to everything else as to how it should operate. So everything starts with the pituitary gland. It's the master gland. This, of course, is connected to uh, scripture when it says, as a man thinks, so he is. So there you have it in scripture as well. That that everything you are is a result of what started in your thinking, in your thought. As a man thinks, so he is. Um, the pituitary gland, the master gland, gives orders to the rest of your being. Um, let's talk, the pineal gland is, um, the pineal gland is a gland that um, regulates melatonin production. 
melatonin production, which as we're going to see in a minute affects so many aspects of your health, but it definitely affects ability to sleep, sleep patterns, depth of sleep, things like that. It also produces DMT. Now DMT um, is powerful to understand because DMT is actually a hallucinogenic um, that is native to your body. Now, all of the hallucinogenic drugs that people take, like maybe acid or mushrooms, things like that, um, basically it's like a, a overly large amount of DMT being released into your brain. And that's why it's, it's not uh, productive or healthy or good for you spiritually um, to use these things recreationally because basically what you're doing is you're just flooding your brain with more DMT um, than it's used to or, or designed for um, in such a way that um, you, you have all, uh, the ability to see things that are outside of the natural realm and, and you're opened up to see all these things that are not actually going on in real life but there's an actual role to DMT um, that is native to your brain. The pineal gland produces and releases DMT and it's what opens, I like to refer to it as the gateway into the spiritual realm because it's what opens, um, opens up your vision to be able to see, not with your natural eyes only, but with the eye of your spirit. And so this is what actually causes you to dream. DMT is what causes you to dream. Um, when you go to sleep, your pineal gland releases uh, not only melatonin, but DMT. And so now your brain opens up a compartment of it that um, is able to put images and visualize everything that's going on in your spirit. It's called dreams. Um, okay, so the pituitary gland, the master gland, it gives orders to every other function of your body. The pineal gland produces melatonin and DMT. And these, of course, are connected spiritually to the spirit of wisdom, the pituitary gland, your thought, higher perspective, and the spirit of insight or right vision, spiritual vision, pineal gland. Okay. Moving forward, let's talk for a minute about blockers, things that block the functionality of these endocrine glands. Now, in a minute, we're going to talk about all of the health problems that are uh, results of these endocrine glands not working as they should, um, and consequently, things that can be healed when we restore the functioning of these endocrine glands. But uh, first, we're going to talk about things that damage or affect or shut down the functioning or limit the functionality of these endocrine glands. Uh, the first blocker, because we're talking about thought and vision, right? Um, and so the, the, the first thing that, is a, that I want to mention as a blocker is the conditioning of our thoughts and our vision. Ever since we were born, um, the world around us and people around us and influences around us have been conditioning us to have certain thought patterns, to think a certain way, um, and to have certain perception on life. And oftentimes these are not spiritual thoughts, these are not spiritual perceptions, they're not true perceptions or true thoughts. We're taught to think judgmentally, we're taught to think um, condemned, we're taught to think uh, performance driven instead of identity driven. We're taught to think and perceive all kinds of different ways that ends up conditioning us. And it's these very thoughts and perceptions that actually um, control or limit if they're bad perceptions and bad thoughts, thoughts that are not true, thoughts that are not from the spirit. Um, they're going to uh, slow down or shut down the functionality of these endocrine glands. Um, this is why we have to be renewed in our mind, renewed in our mind, renewed, to become new again, to shed the conditioning of thoughts and perceptions in order to think and see in truth from the spirit within us. Um, and so, and that will stimulate and restore functionality of the endocrine glands. Let me give a quick example. So I've struggled for a while with ADHD, also OCD. <clears throat> excuse me, but I was healed supernaturally of a crippling form of OCD, uh, one of the most influential healings I've experienced in my life. Um, but I still, to this day, struggle with ADHD. And, um, and again, remember the connection between the energy field. Anything that's a chemical imbalance in your brain is, resulted, or is a result of 
a lack of energy in that part of your brain, a problem with your energy field, so then your brain doesn't produce enough chemicals. And so, for me, uh, one way that I've overcome ADHD, rather than taking medication, uh, or drinking excessive amounts of coffee, or alcohol, or things that I used to do to try to just keep my focus, um, one thing that I've done is sound therapy, sound meditation, where I focus in on certain vibrations and sounds, and it stimulates the, uh, stimulates the pituitary gland because I focus mainly on the seventh region. Um, and so stimulates all that energy and, and I can feel, you know, when you do sound therapy, as some of you may have, you feel all that energy being released <clears throat> to that region of your body. And after I would do that even for 10 minutes, um, I would have such clarity of thought, not a trace of ADHD, uh, without taking anything or taking anything topically or medication or anything like that, just by doing the sound therapy, releasing that energy, balancing the energy in that area of my body, I would have crystal clear, focused thoughts. And it's amazing. And, uh, but what I found was that after time, the effect would wear off and my, my brain would get foggy again and have difficulty focusing, things like that. And I, I said, I prayed, I said, why, why Lord, um, why is it just temporary? Why does it, why does it help for a while but fade off? Why is it not permanent? And he said, it's because there's a problem in your thinking. And he showed me some thinking patterns, ways I viewed myself, ways I viewed my relationship with others, um, and that w the thoughts themselves were shutting down the functionality. Um, and so we need to be renewed in our thought as we're also being healed. So thoughts can be a blocker. The renewing of our mind and our perception um, by the Spirit of God is key for restoring functionality. Um, it's why we have to give ourselves to prayer, give ourselves to meditation, give ourselves to um, scripture reading, um, etc. so we can have our mind renewed by the revelation of the Spirit of God and we can become um, of new mind and new perception. Other major blockers uh, for these endocrine glands and the functionality of them, um, not just thoughts, but also physical toxins. Um, that we consume, that enter our body, that go into the systems of our body, um, that block the functionality, slow down, shut down um, these endocrine gland systems in our body, physical toxins. Now this section here regarding physical toxins is totally up to you in terms of application to your life. Um, it's up to you how you apply this um, to your daily life um, in order to bring health. And, and eliminate toxins that block the health and the functionality of the endocrine glands. So I'm not going to talk about every toxin, obviously, but I'm going to talk about some major ones and also some ones that are easy to um, change or remove from our lifestyle. Uh, one major toxin is aluminum. Aluminum is especially damaging to your pituitary gland. Um, aluminum and heavy metals in general, also I'll say that, lead, mercury, aluminum. Um, now, the problem with aluminum is that unlike other metals, it doesn't connect, conduct electricity like other metals. This is why at the restaurant that I used to work at, we would put things on aluminum foil and put it into the oven because we could take it out of the oven afterwards and the aluminum did not get hot in the oven because it doesn't conduct energy the same way that other metals do. And so when you clog up your body with lots of aluminum, those energy fields that we talked about are slowed down. There's a depletion of energy to your system and then there's a shutdown of your endocrine glands um, because there's not enough energy to make them operate as they should. And, and the pituitary gland especially is affected uh, by aluminum. Now, and we're going to talk about the health um, consequences of that in a minute. Um, now, aluminum, practically speaking, it is practically speaking, is found in, um, in a lot of deodorants, um, a lot of deodorants, a lot of soaps, bar soaps, shampoos, body washes, things of that nature. Um, and so that's why I have switched to all natural deodorants, all natural soaps, all natural shampoos, etc. Um, because I uh, don't want to be feeding all of that excess aluminum into my body knowing that it's going to damage uh, the functionality of my endocrine gland system. 
Um, another major toxin, so that was the major one that we can adjust for application. Again, I'm keeping it pretty basic, not talking about too many toxins, but that's the major one that we can adjust if we'd like to uh, for the pituitary gland health. Uh, for the pineal gland, a major toxin I want to talk about is fluoride. Now, fluoride is found in a lot of our drinking water. Um, a lot of the bottled water companies um, add fluoride to it. Poland Springs is um, I think one of the highest fluoride contents and most other bottled, bottled waters have fluoride in it as well. Uh, you can find brands that uh, don't have fluoride in it. Whole Foods, their store brand, um, doesn't have fluoride in it. Life Water doesn't have fluoride in it and there are some others. Um, and uh, tap water has fluoride added to it. Um, with the exception of a little town, uh, Kennebunk, Maine, which just made it illegal. Uh, there might be other places that made it illegal to add it to the water supply, but that's telling in and of itself if some places are making it illegal. Um, but most tap water uh, has fluoride in it, and bottled water has fluoride in it, but you can find bottled water that doesn't have it in it. Um, or you can buy a filter for your tap water for your shower, because uh, a lot of it goes through your pores. Um, toothpaste has fluoride added into it um, and so you can buy natural toothpaste because you know um, fluoride in your toothpaste goes directly into your gums, your bloodstream, things like that. Uh, so let's talk about what fluoride does. Fluoride, fluoride um, calcifies your pineal gland. It builds calcium deposits all around it um, and you can actually take um, you can take uh, brain scans, things like that, that show the condition of your pineal gland and uh, oftentimes it's so calcified. Um, and fluoride is a major calcifier of the pineal gland. Now you can decalcify your pineal gland. Iodine supplements are a major way that you can decalcify the effects of past fluoride consumption. Um, and of course, we can, we can seek to drink filtered water, pure water, um, if we drink bottled water, bottled water that doesn't have fluoride in it, so our pineal gland can begin functioning the way it should um, and, and not cause health problems like we're about to talk about. Okay, so let's talk about uh, the practical, uh, all of the health problems. Now this is actually an exciting section that we're moving into because we're going to talk about um, the health problems that are caused by your pituitary gland and your pineal gland um, not operating properly, or your seventh and sixth chakra, if you will, not operating properly, your pituitary gland, your pineal gland, not operating properly. We're going to talk about the health effects that it has, but it's exciting because this list is also a list of things that we will be healed from, you will be healed from, uh, when we restore the health of the pineal gland and the pituitary gland. Uh, so first, let's talk about the pituitary gland. When the pituitary gland is not working as it should, you will have difficulty with weight control. Either difficulty losing weight, difficulty gaining weight. Um, weight control problems are uh, traced back to the functionality of the pituitary gland. Another major problem is fatigue. If you're extra tired and sluggish all the time and, and there's fatigue going on, pituitary gland um, can be the result of that. Um, depression. Depression. Um, is something that is connected to uh, the functionality of the pituitary gland. Now I'll make a quick point, you know, we could uh, take pills for depression, and I'm not completely anti-medication by the way, um, but we could take uh, topical remedies for these things or uh, that have other side effects, you know, or we could work on being healed from the inside out so our body actually functions how it should. Um, another thing that is a result of the pituitary gland not working properly, uh, muscle weakness, muscle weakness, muscle aching, unexplained muscle aching um, from the pituitary gland. And um, another major health concern that is a problem of um, a pituitary gland that's not functioning as it should is Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's is a disease that is um, caused by um, dysfunctions in, or inoperativeness in the pituitary gland, which is why, for example, aluminum is one of the major causes of Alzheimer's. So, um, 
weight control issues, fatigue, depression, muscle weakness, muscle aches, Alzheimer's, all these are things that we can be healed from and things that you can avoid in your future, such as Alzheimer's, by eliminating toxins, being healed, making sure these systems of your body are working properly. Now what about the pineal gland? The pineal gland is, as we mentioned, it produces melatonin and DMT. Now there are so many health problems associated with uh, lack of melatonin or lack of production of melatonin from your pineal gland. Uh, obviously trouble sleeping. Um, trouble sleeping, difficulty with sleep patterns, not getting deep sleep, waking up frequently, things like that, um, is caused by a dysfunction of the pineal gland resulting in not enough melatonin. Again, depression, because this fascinating thing how, and I'll just do this, say, say this quickly, melatonin that's produced in your brain, it, it happens in a place of darkness. As soon as you wake up and your eyes are exposed to sunlight, that melatonin turns to serotonin, and serotonin is what makes you feel happy. Um, and so if, if your pineal gland isn't functioning properly, not only will you have difficulty sleeping, but you'll also have problems with depression because there won't be enough serotonin in your brain. Now again, you could take a pill for depression, or you could try to get your pineal gland to work properly so that you have lots of serotonin so you naturally feel happy. And I vote for the healing and wholeness option personally. Another thing that's affected by the pineal gland um, is sexual dysfunction, troubles with your cycle, um, fertility problems, things of that nature are also affected by a lack of melatonin in your body or consequently can be fixed and healed um, by restoring the function of the pineal gland. Another one is mood disorders, like we talked about, um, not having the proper uh, serotonin levels, just moods, ups and downs. Um, can be caused by your pineal gland not functioning as it should. Um, cardiovascular health, problems in your heart, uh, depletion of melatonin in your system will definitely um, not be good for your cardiovascular health and can result in things such as hypertension and stuff like that. And again, these are things that can be researched even through medical uh, websites and things like that. Um, that might not mention things like chakras or the seven spirits of God, but will definitely mention things that um, will go wrong in your health based on a lack of melatonin and things of that nature. Um, another thing is increased, increased risk of cancer. It's been shown that a depletion in melatonin in your system will give you an increased risk of cancer. Okay, so uh, these are all things um, the, everything we talked about is just a list of things that can be healed and or avoided in our systems or corrected in our mood disorders. And all of these things we talked about is a list of the healing that comes forth from being healed in the regions of your uh, pituitary gland, pineal gland, um, and things of that nature. Um, and so I'm going to talk about a couple ways that healing can come forth here as we close. Um, so, number one, we talked about ridding toxins, getting rid of the toxins that are causing the poor health of these functions of our body. Um, secondly, environmental, such as what we eat, um, you know, the condition of the air and the place that we live, things such as essential oil, aromatherapy, things like that, what we eat, what we breathe, these are all environmental things. Uh, which we are going to talk about later, not in this session. We'll talk later about things such as things to be placed in your environment, um, color therapy, um, sounds, foods, what we breathe. We're going to talk more about things that help our overall health in our environment um, in later lessons. We talked about ridding toxins. We will talk more about environmental. And we can never neglect this um, the direct healing, um, laying hands on or, or releasing, um, releasing the Spirit of God to heal uh, and to stabilize and to make alive um, all systems of our body. Again, just like we can lay hands on, you know, someone with back conditions and the back can be healed, so too we can lay hands on the regions of our pituitary gland or pineal gland, restore the energy flow, heal the um, heal the, the glands that are in that location, etc. Make everything alive 
to the proper uh, flow of energy, make it all alive to the Spirit of God, vibrant and full and alive with the Spirit of God by directly ministering um, to those regions. So here as we close, um, our takeaway of course is the whole toxin conversation. Our future outlook is talking more about environmental elements. Um, and here as we close, I'm just going to do a little bit of direct ministry, uh, releasing uh, the Spirit of God of healing directly to those regions. So if you're watching this, because we're not in person, this is by video, uh, what I want you to do is I want you to place your hand on the back of your head, right at the little point part of your skull. I want you to place your palm of your hand right over that region to start. And I'm going to pray, and I'm going to release, and I'm going to minister to the energy systems of your body. I'm going to minister to the to the pituitary gland, to the pineal gland, and we're going to release some healing here before we close. So I want you to put your hand there, and I'm going to begin to pray. Lord God Almighty, right now, we thank you for your spirit, the spirit of Christ, the quickening spirit. And right now, I release your spirit, your quickening spirit, Spirit of Christ, I release it right now to the entire region, to the entire region of the pituitary gland and surrounding regions, to this whole seventh chakra system of their physical body. Right now, I release your healing. I release your healing energy. I release your healing spirit right now. I command this area to be open to the presence of God, to the spirit that's within them. I command it to be open right now to receive that healing energy flow from the spirit that's within them right now by your spirit being ministered. I command every region, the pituitary gland and every surrounding gland, every surrounding region to be completely healed in the name of Jesus, to be completely restored in the name of Jesus. Yeshua HaMasiach, Jesus our Christ. Right now your spirit flows in this entire region. Now I want you to put your hand on the top of your head. God, I thank you for the energy of your spirit, the healing grace of your spirit, flooding every part of their brain, every part of their mind, making them alive to you. Every system in their body fully functioning. In the name of Yeshua. Even as I do this, I can feel all the energy being ministered to me. So I trust, what, depend, no matter what your level of perception, whether you can feel powerfully the Spirit of God flowing and healing, or whether it's you can feel it a little bit, um, I encourage you that you're being ministered to, number one, and also, you can do this every day. You can lay hands on yourself and just say, come alive, come alive. I release the Spirit of God, come alive, come alive. In the name of Jesus, come alive. You can do this to yourself every day. Now let's minister to your pineal gland. I need you to put your hand over your forehead, over your brow. Spirit of the living God, I release your healing grace, your healing energy right now into every single person under the influence of my voice, I release your spirit of healing in the name of Jesus to the pineal gland, to this region, to everything around it, to the entire system of the sixth chakra in their physical body right now. I command this entire region be opened, be completely opened to the presence, to the spirit of God in every part of this region. Be completely healed, be completely flooded with light, be completely open. In the name of Yeshua, Lord, we thank you. Again, I can feel the energy. I trust and hope that you can as well. And you can do this every day to increase. Just lay hands on yourself. Say, release the Spirit of Christ. Be completely open, be completely healed so that you're in these systems, as we talked about, these physiological systems, not some made-up voodoo type of deal, but 
this physiological systems can be healed by the Spirit of Christ. So lay hands on yourself every day. Work on ridding toxins from your life. Um, increase your spiritual connection. Increase your spiritual health. And by consequence, also increase your physiological health. Every part of your physical dimension affected by these glands, by these, the functionality of these systems we've been talking about, are being healed as we go through this, which is exciting because I see in my spirit complete health being visited by everyone who's a part of what we're doing here. Complete, complete healing, complete health in your whole person in all seven dimensions of your spirit being quickened to your whole being so you can be vibrant and alive with the Spirit of God and in oneness with the Spirit of Christ um, that we can be whole, be complete, be well mentally, emotionally, and physically. Be blessed upon blessing. Much love to each one. Continue on in the goodness of God. Continue on in all things pertaining to being in His presence and being quick and being made whole, being made alive as spiritual bodies, spiritual beings. Um, be blessed.